So I'm gonna tell you the honest truth of why shops are dropping magic and it's just financial, it's not political, it's not I hate magic. I actually do love magic and you know I open on my streams. We open tons of magic on my streams when I'm not lazy. When you're know, streaming is hard. You stream three hours a day. It's that's 21 hours. That's a lot of like that's like that's like a part-time job almost. Um, while running my business. So I need to hire someone to stream for me, but uh, we'll, fi we'll figure that out later. So when you buy a box of Pokemon for $82, typically the box can sell for 100 shipped online, no matter how bad the box is. You know, Amazon has boxes for maybe 90, 95. But my point is typically you can sell it for 100 online, which means maybe you pay $8 max shipping. That is max shipping, right? and you pay a little bit for your time. So basically, you're $90 in a product that you can definitely sell for 100, making a 10% profit margin, which is not great, but that is the worst case scenario. If you buy a booster box of Pokemon from a distributor, your worst case scenario is you make a 10% profit minus your time and stuff, right? If you have employees, overhead, and so on. So if you buy a Magic product, it's a little different. If you buy for $82, $84, right? Uh, there's, again, many different types of magic product, of course, but if you buy a general, I'm just talking about, I'm just using the simplest example of the draft booster box. You hope to sell it for 100 and you see on Amazon for $60, being tweeted out by 20 community callers. What Wizards of the Coast has done is they have changed magic into exactly what they do with Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons is a very interesting case example. I want you to understand this because then you can understand where magic is heading and why all stores do not want to do Dungeons and Dragons and they kind of force people to play in their basements, right? So Dungeons and Dragons, you have miniature figures, you buy that one time, so you normally have your figures already. You have a book, the books do get updated and maybe you buy a new book, a new adventure. Okay. So a book is going to be cheaper on Amazon by probably 20% over what you pay a distributor, very similar to Magic. Therefore, any individual with any common sense will just buy from Amazon Prime and then get the book. So then they come to your store, they got their book, they got their figures, they can go, they can play there for hours. They're going to use your bathroom, they're going to use your Wi-Fi. They're gonna make your store dirty. They're gonna spill stuff on your floors that you have to clean and they're not gonna clean up after themselves, right? This happened to a game store that bankrupt called Groovy Geckos back when I was in law school. There was a bunch of Dungeons and Dragon players and that's what they did. They never bought anything. I mean, there was nothing for them to buy. The store didn't even have any Dungeons and Dragons books at the time but they would go every single night, they would play, there would be a big group of them, they would be dirty and smelly and messy, no offense to Dungeons and Dragons, but it's, it's just what it is. And they would actually, because they were smelly and rude and loud, they would actually, you know, I've seen customers, right, bring their kids in and then like, oh, well, I, let's get out of here, guys. This is not their place for me. So not only were they taking time, room, you obviously you need an employee to make sure they're not like taking stuff, right? It sounds very, very pessimistic, but you have to look at all these things as a store owner. Obviously, you wouldn't leave them alone in the store, right? So obviously, you need an employee to be there, even if they're the only people there. Uh, and employees, a lot of times, people have trouble kicking them out because, again, so then they stay past hours to play games and... It, you know, there should be like a public library that stays like after hours and so on to allow them to do that in a public space. But the burden of the cost, and there is, trust me, there is cost associated with this, right? Lost customers, you know, to clean the carpets, you might have to replace the carpets, flooded toilets, you know, there is massive costs associated with this. Air conditioning, right? Or uh, heat in the winter, right? To, if they're the only people in the store, then... It, the employee cost, right? To keep an employee there to watch over them. That is how Wizard of the Coast has done Dungeons and Dragons. They have taken all the money, given Amazon a little cut, and they forced the game stores to take all the burden. This is Magic the Gathering in a nutshell, okay? Now you might think, oh, what about the promos? What about the uh, champion? I mean, 
No, it is not worth having F and M because your crowd, you, let's say you ask them to give $5. God forbid they put $5 in pool. They're going to say, okay, there's eight of us. There's $5. That's a $40 prize pool, right? That's what they're going to say. We either want cash or we want trade credit. And then we want free pizza. We want free Mountain Dew. We want free Coke. We want to, you know, use your bathroom and clog it. We want to, you know, look at comic books when it's downtime and put our greasy Cheeto fingers on the comic books that you have. This is not a prop. If, if they were buying boxes, so the difference in the past has been at least if there's eight of them, probably a few of them will buy something. Maybe they'll buy a box to open with their friends and so on. And then we're making a little bit of money. Well, no, they're no longer doing that because Magic, before the Amazon, before the Ruby Chance, yeah, the store would be where you go to buy boxes and buy product and buy sleeves. But if you're going to buy the box from Amazon, you might as well get sleeves with it in the play mat too on Amazon. It's, I mean, it's being delivered at the same time. So if you're going to wait for the box for a day or two, you can get everything. So my main takeaway, and this is kind of really where I am with this, and I mean, is that Wizards of the Coast, they have a pattern of behavior. Remember the whole cosplay thing, you know, and they say Jeremy Hambly was the villain, but I would think Wizard of the Coast was the villain. Christine Sprankle, who you use as your poster for the largest GP Vegas event in the time. She was on the website, she was on a promotional, she was on a Facebook ad, she was everywhere. It turned out they didn't pay her a dime to use her likeness, her image, and the work that she did to cosplay for, I think it was Liliana, maybe it was Elspeth, no, I think it was Elspeth. In GP Vegas, it was Elspeth. If she would be mad at somebody, it would be you know, and then she had to do the OnlyFans, like they always had to do the OnlyFans and so on. And then that's, I think Jeremy criticized that and so on. But again, if Wizard of the Coast hired her, gave her a good job, get paid her 100K a year, or maybe, okay, let's say 80K a year, 50K a year even. She was living out in a trailer of her mom. She made videos about that. It was sad as shit, man. I mean, this was the face of Magic the Gathering and she didn't get paid a dime because she was living in the trailer of her mom. This is Magic the Gathering. They're already showing that. The artist that they re, you know, when they did the 30th anniversary, they were never contacted. Many, I think one of them is really mad. One of the artists is, uh, he, Earthbind artist is very mad. Or uh, not him, but his uh, estate. His son is very mad. They never contacted him. They say, we're reprinting the card. We're using the art again. Are we good? Do we need to give you like a licensing fee or something like that? Whatever, it, royalty, whatever it is, right? So, I mean, at the end of the day, they treat people like shit. They treat their employees like shit. They treat their players like shit. And they treat their game stores as shit. But game store can say no. I don't want to buy an $82 product from my distributor that you're going to sell on Amazon for $60 today. Just like I don't want to buy your Dungeons & Dragons book. I refuse to do Dungeons & Dragons because it's going to lose me money and it's going to ruin my store. You're going to see more and more stores not do magic, playing magic. P magic players are not profitable unless they're like, you know, high end and are drinking like $8 lattes and eating $20 chicken tendies, right? That is the honest truth. Any game, you know, why Schwartz? You know how many promos they give you that you can resell? It's, a, it's like infinite. And some of these promos are like $100 promos. It's like, whoa. Uh, Bushy Road, does it, who owns Y Swartz, they own Carfi, they give you like boxes, boxes of promos and stuff. So it's like, all right, maybe we'll have it. We'll have the game, you know, we we'll hand out the promos, try to make the game grow. Any new game, they do a really good job of trying to get stores to carry the game because they need to. Magic, because it got so big and so, you know, arrogant, if you will, they expect stores, oh, it's magic, we love magic, to do everything for free. I want most stores to say no. No. We're not going to do what you should be doing. You did it in the past. Magic the God, Wizard of the Coast had its own stores in the past and they all bankrupt. People say, oh, the acquisition. Okay, cool. You acquired it. If it was so profitable, Hasbro, why didn't you keep them? The answer is because it was not profitable. So if Hasbro 
with zero cost to these items, by the way, are very close to zero, just a printing cost, printing and delivery cost. If they cannot run a local game store, how the hell is somebody without a business degree, maybe not even a college degree, supposed to do it with magic? If Magic the Gathering and Hasbro cannot run their own local game stores, which in the past they tried to do but failed, at a basically a zero cost, right? So they're not buying their booster boxes for $82 a box. They're getting them for like cost, which is like maybe five bucks. With those margins operating a place for people to meet and play, not steal stuff, loss at Magic stores is much greater for Magic than Pokemon stores. Because the Pokemon buyer, they'll buy their cards or buy the booster box to open at home or in the store in front of you and then they'll leave. They're not loyal, I mean, I mean, just imagine what it is. It's a bunch of teenagers, young people, and they're just hanging around your store for eight to 10 hours a day. What do you think they're gonna do? I mean, you're not, they're baby, even if instead of having a magic store, you had a babysitter center, you would make more money because at least you could charge them for babysitting a week, right? A lot, I mean, it's, you, as a store owner, I'm pleading with you for these, for your store, drop the WPN, drop magic as a product. I'm talking to my distributor. My distributor is not happy because he has a lot of magic product. Um, but I'm just saying, no, I cannot pay these prices for for these things. And I know that like these prices based on Walmart and Target are really ab aggressive. But for me, like it just doesn't make it, it's not you, it's not, it's it's just the product sucks. You, you can't pay $82 a box or $84 a box when a box is $60 on Amazon, you just can't. Like, and then you can't do the free play and the free, I mean, you can't do it. I mean, there's just, Oh, as a store owner, it's not just frustrating. It's like, I mean, it just destroys your business. Carrying Magic the Gathering will destroy your business. Carrying Pokemon, you make money. Carrying Yu-Gi-Oh, you actually make money from Yu-Gi-Oh. I've tried it, you make money from Yu-Gi-Oh. Sports cards, you will make money. All, all of these other card games got it right because they do not require you. I mean, Yu-Gi-Oh is a different beast, but we'll, I mean, Yu-Gi-Oh I can get into a little later, but they do not require the store to be a community center, a babysitting center for no money. So if Wizards of the Coast cannot run a local game store, which they've tried in the past, profitably with the margins they have on their own product, there's no way a store today competing against Amazon and their $60, $70 boxes every day on sale would even have a chance in hell, right? When their lowest cost for a box I've ever got was $82, $84 right now. And you try to make it work. You try to justify, okay, these are maybe we get sleeve packs. You try different products. I've tried all the Magic products, none of them have a positive margin and all of them are cheaper on Amazon at some point in time. Again, Amazon has a lot of sales, so I'm not saying all their boxes are $60, $70. I'm just saying that Kaldenheim, Crimson Val, uh, I've seen Kamigawa, right? Neon Destiny, I've seen all of them hit below $80. Uh, New Compella, and I've seen most sets, it doesn't matter, sets, draft, collectors, it doesn't matter. I've seen them go below distribution price. And in fact, I myself have bought some um, to try to resell. <laughs> this is so savage, you know?